Hey garden friends, we're not in the greenhouse, but today we're gonna plant up pansies and that will bring color to my garden until warmer weather comes. So let's get rolling and plant these up. Spring in a box. Aren't these gorgeous? They're going in the circle garden. Set it right here. Okay, so I have my trusty dusty bench out here and I bought the pansies. I bought four six packs. They were $5 a piece, so that's $20 of expense for a whole lot of color. Now pansies here will do great even in cold weather. So I'll get some blooms before I can put my petunias out in here. So I have my garden knife. This is a lot of times what I will dig and plant with because it's just the right size. Now, pansies in the past, the gophers have not bothered because this does not have a wire mesh under this circle garden. Um, and these right here, these are iris reticulatas, which are a beautiful purple, blue, really vibrant jewel tone color. So I think the pansies will be perfect with it. Now, when I plant, I'm gonna move over here so you can see what I'm working on. As I plant, stop being behind this pot. Um, I do not put any starter fertilizers in the hole because you don't need them. And also it can be actually a detriment uh, rather than a benefit. So I'll link the video I did on all about starter fertilizers in the description box below and you can check that out. But I do check the roots and make sure that they're not circling around or not root bound. And these are not, these are perfect. Forgive the dirt bike or whatever in the background. That's a little mini dirt bike. Okay, so I, you know what? I, sh I planted one, but I'm going to lay the rest out so I know how to space them. And I think I'm going to do like a zigzag, like one up here, back here, one up here, etc. And that way it will really fill it up. As I said, I bought four six packs so that I would have plenty to put in here. And that one broke off and I'll just go around the circle the same way all the way around and make sure I have them spaced well so I get the most bang for my buck and I'll try not to be too noisy about this now I know um, this garden center that I like to get these from oh well, it looks like a daffodil got dug up here. I'm going to put it back down in the soil. Um, they'll be getting petunias in not too long and I can keep the petunias in my greenhouse until it's warm enough to put them out here. Plus I have all the petunias that I have started from seed. So let me get these out. Try not to crinkle the plastic too much because it gets a little loud on my microphone. All right. Okay, there we go. Well, we're gonna have more than enough to really fill this up and make it very colorful. Yep, perfect. Oh, I just sunk into a gopher hole tunnel. They do love the soft dirt. I even see a hole right here where they've been digging underneath there. They sure have. Alrighty. Some of these I could actually put a little bit closer. I was gonna get them spaced out, see how they're doing. Now I have used the granules, the mole max, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't seem, you have to keep doing it, but it doesn't seem to do a good enough job that I've been pleased with. 
Okay, let's see. I have a whole another six pack. So I'll get these planted and then I'll fill in where I think it needs a little bit more. Okay, so there we go there. Where did I stick my garden knife? Oh, right there. Stack these up. One thing these six packs come in handy that when I'm potting up my seedlings that I have started, I could use them. I just uh, scrub them up, sanitize them, and pot up the seedlings. I like reusing things. So these daffodils are coming in pretty. Now that one I got planted. So this one, we could go right here. So see how this one kind of has a tight bottom of roots? So I just do the, pull it off. That way they can get going. Now I didn't bring my rev out here and soak these um, in that before planting them, but I will come back and water them in with it and that will help the roots to get going better. It is a root stimulant and not really a fertilizer. Okay. I do have a video all about it and I explain it a little bit more in depth if you wish to go see that. I will put that also in the description box below. One there, one here, and I see a spot over here where I could put another one when I come back through. This says pansy blue, blue botch, blotch. Okay. We've got just a whole lot of racket going on around here, don't we? Alrighty, we'll move around this way. Now this bitch is wonderful. I think it's a ride mower. Oh, I don't know what that is. I can see something going on down the street. Alrighty, so I can get these a little closer over here. And one thing when you get so many like this to fill in, it really fills in with color. And you make it a statement. I'm gonna grab the other six packs so I can go ahead and wouldn't you know how to get out here and then people make all this racket. That's a, actually looks like a little ride mower, but they have a snow plow on the front of it. Not that there's any snow around here right now. Well, if you look over there, you'll see a little bit. That's just where I had gathered and after falling off the roof of my primrose cottage. So, so once I'm done planting these up in this bed, I will come back through and I will um, prune off any that are fading so that it encourages more blooms and have it be stimulated to do that. Okay, so we'll stack them up there as we go around. It doesn't hurt it to pull the roots off the bottom. It just, you don't have to tickle them or whatever, just rip them off. Um, they do great. They do fine, especially with the Rev. Once you give them a jolt of that. Now this bench that I'm using right here, I'll move back so you can see it better. I got this one from Gardener Supply, but I've seen them on um, Amazon, etc. And it is a knee saver for me. I just noticed this last year, my knee's crackling when I get up and down. So probably arthritis, but I'm 61 years old, so I guess I can't be a spring chicken all my life, right? It's just surprising you don't feel you're that old and then you start having these weird things happening and you're like, what is going on? I'm not that old, and yet I am. Yeah, I'm really gonna get them lush in here, lush and full. Okay, just a few more around and then we'll come back and trim off the blooms that are fading. I'm sure that noise in the background is louder for me than it is for you. But this is a neighborhood filled with kids and what have you, so you got the noise. Plus the school is just right down there, um, a couple blocks, and it's kind of nice when I sit out on my deck in the warmer 
climb when it's warmer and eat lunch. You can hear the kids outside playing and stuff. There's just a nice feeling to that. Here are all the kids, all their happy voices playing outside. So yeah, this summer in here, I was thinking of putting my red banana in this pot. This pot is empty. I just have other pots sitting in it. And last year I had an elephant ear in here and it did okay, but it just wasn't the bold statement I wanted. So I was thinking if I could, I could put my red banana plant, which is in my office and getting quite big. So I think it'd be a perfect statement piece right there. And then all the way around, I'm gonna have the petunias as I do every year, because they just do so well in here. And so far, the gophers have left them alone. Try not to squish my boxwoods. All of these boxwoods around here, I started from cuttings. And I do have a video and a blog post on that too. And it just, I mean, you have to wait a few years till they get bigger, um, but it's, it's really a great way to save money. And if you're one that likes slow gardening like me, where you start your own plants and you just enjoy the process instead of just the end result, then it's so easy to do the boxwoods. That's nice to have, like all of a sudden you have the hedge because I want it to grow around here and hide this metal and just be a green, a ring of greenery around. And I just think that'll be so pretty, especially this time of year when it's really nothing more than dirt, leaves, pine needles. I just think having that green will be just something special. Okay, well, I have them all planted. So I wanna go get, mix up my jug of organic Rev and then I will come back and we will pour them, pour it on each of the pansies to make sure they get a good soaking in. There was a lot of tunnels under here of the gophers, so we'll see what they do. They've, like I said, never bothered the pansies before, um, but who knows? Well, that sun is coming around the tree. So I'm in here, I collected some rainwater. I have a bunch of pails and buckets out there that it collects in and I love to use it because rainwater is very good for your plants, believe it or not. Much better than my city water anyways. So I'm gonna put in a couple tablespoons of the Rev to put on my freshly planted pansies to give them a bit of a boost. Now this stimulates root growth, which is what you really want when you first plant your plants in the ground. And again, I gotta get my handle thing. I thought I had saved one lid and I don't, can't find it. So I must've thrown it away thinking I didn't need it. But there we go. Just use the rubberized part of the glove. Now we'll take this out and we will go water in the pansies, and I need to scrub this up a little bit and oil it. Let me see, do I have my oil? I have uh, WD-40 in here. I don't know what happened to it. Sometimes my husband sneaks in here, gets my stop. But it looks like they're working okay. So let's go back out, feed them, and we will cut them, give them a little nip. Okay, let me get around here. And I'm just going to Water in each one of the pansies, easy peasy, with the rev. We go go for tunnel there because it's sinking it when I step. Alrighty, did I do that one yet? Out here, make sure I did plant them all. I don't have any sitting on the soil. I was a little disappointed they didn't have the uh, amber colored ones that were so pretty that I planted down at the Kingdom Hall, but it's all good. Now this is one that looks a little faded. Now I cut it off and then I just nip it into little pieces and drop it on the soil and it 
compost them in it. And that's my sheet composting method. Ruth Stallcup. Uh, that, was that her? No, 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 not. What was her name? Ruth Stout, that's it. Um, she's the infamous lady that started all that, or at least promoted it when everyone else said she was crazy. I like crazy. I do things that are out of the norm too and when they work, I love it. I love it, love it. Okay, all right here, this one. So nipping off these flowers will also help to stimulate new buds. And we're supposed to have mild weather. The nights may get down into the upper 30s um, for a little bit, but a lot of some of the nights that are gonna not get down to the 30s at all, they're gonna stay in the 40s. So these should be able to take off and do really well and um, provide a lot more bloom. And they'll thicken up a little bit around. And this will be pretty until I can get my petunias in. Now it'll probably be closer to June before I can put my petunias in and be know that they're not gonna get frostbit. Though last year, was last year, no, the year before. Maybe it was last year. I had grown these wave doubles. They didn't have them available this year. They were in like a creamy white and I had planted them all along the edges of my path and we got some pretty harsh freezes and they lived. They did beautiful through it. I was shocked. I just knew for sure they were gonna just croak and not live through it, but they impressed me. So that's one thing I do. The, the wave petunias for me seem to be a little more resilient to cold than others. Um, that's been my experience. So, okay, lots of goodies, lots of blooms to trim back. I'm gonna lean forward here and get these. Alrighty, so there we have it. I'm not gonna mulch or anything, um, because right now, I don't think it needs it. And number two, uh, I may come in with like some alyssum or whatever in the next couple weeks. I'm going to watch the temperatures. Alyssum, it takes pretty much a lot to kill it off too. And they had some beautiful alyssum down there, but I think that would be really pretty filling in. And that would go, go through the whole summer and would mix with the petunias as well. So that is that, my friends. Just a quick and easy little spruce up of the circle garden in the secret cottage garden. And I'll take a step back and I'll kind of show you what the rest of the garden looks like. It's, um, yeah, the beginning of spring. It's still late winter, it's not even spring officially yet. And it looks like it, um, yeah. It, we just, the snow just melted off. So this, that's what it looks like. And I haven't had a chance to get out here and clean because it's been so cold. And um, I don't like the cold. So I wait until it's warmer and then I can get out here. Now this next week we're gonna be gone, so I can't get to it then. But when I get back, I fully intend on getting out here and just tackling it if we still have good weather. We could get more snow. April can be as snowy as February or March. So I'm, you know, I don't hold my breath about the weather keeping up this nice trend, but it is something I can hope for. So and I will let you guys go. I will see you in my next video. If you hadn't seen it yet, go back and see the pansies I planted that I had hoped to get for here too, the same color, but they were sold out. I don't blame them, that was a beautiful color. And you can see what I was hoping for here, but I'm really liking this blue too. I have a question for you. Do you prefer pansies or violas? And if so, if you choose one over the other, why? I many times will choose violas over pansies only because they will bloom longer into the heat, part, you know, warmer temperatures than the pansies do. The pansies will stop much sooner than the violas. And I'll take you to my viola field in a minute and show you that it's where violas reseeded and they are just coming up everywhere. Alrighty, as promised, we'll take a quick peek at what the secret cottage garden looks like here on March. Today, I think it's the 15th, 14th or 15th. And um, yeah, what's coming up? What's hanging around? There's a few patches of snow 
And over here is, this is my pinky lavender delphinium. Oh, no, no, that's my, um, that's that <laughs> thistle. Uh, yeah, Echinops. It's doing good. But over here is the delphinium. Looks like some slugs have been after it, and I should take some root cuttings of it, or basal cuttings, and show you how I do that. Yeah, I really should do that today because in a week they'll be too big to do. Let me see if any of the ones over here came up. I had some back over here, a nice pretty blue one. Now, you see this pot? Now it was level. And the way it's doing that, it means that the gophers have undermined it. So that's why it's sinking there. I'll have to pull it up and I'll probably get some help with from my husband because that pot's heavy to uh, level it. So let me see over here. There was, there's larkspur over here, but I'm not seeing any delphiniums come up. This is a big um, apricot colored foxglove and I could cut back some of the leaves that look faded and what have you. But as I said, I'm not seeing the delphinium. Maybe when I get in here and clean up, I'll find one. So not in here. There was a white one back here. I see gopher tunnels back here. This is like a main highway for the gophers back through here. I have this heavily covered with leaves. So that's what I think happened to my delphiniums because they would come back year after year um, is that I think the gophers ate them because they were planted along there. So here is my circle garden. Here's one of the raised beds I'm filling. We had intended on filling it with the distal turkey compost that I get from that organic turkey ranch and uh, my husband's truck hasn't been working properly so we haven't been able to do that so it's not completely filled. I did dump out some pots in there and they had daffodils obviously in them and other things so I'll get some flowers in there eventually we'll get to it. Oh my clematis back here look at this clematis it's blooming or getting not blooming I'm sorry budding and I need to, to prune back this viburnum. I need to look that up. I'm not quite familiar with pruning viburnums. So looks like, sounds like the kids are having fun. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm watching him as a little kid on a little, little motorbike. It's cute. These are my Coco Loco roses. I need to put them up in a bigger container. And I have one out front, but for now they're doing great in here. Okay, well, let's get rolling over here and I'll show you my bed of violas that reseeded themselves They're underneath this bench. I need to come through and blow out all the pine needles, but I'll try to get you up close and see some of them. I probably need to give them a dash of fertilizer because this is just sand that they're trying to come up in and then in my pathway all along the path here. So what did I tell you? We could get snow and get quite a bit of it. So I'm going to go check out the pansies in the circle garden right now and how they're looking. I accidentally left my bench out here. Put that in my greenhouse. So, yep, covered up completely. So this is April at Flower Patch. This is not unusual, so. But the couple of weeks of warm weather was really nice to enjoy and we, it will return. So, just checking in on the pansies pretty pansies in the circle garden. They'll be fine. They'll get through this. They'll pop right up as soon as the sun warms up and they'll be, they'll just fill in great. In fact, they probably will enjoy this note. At least it protects them from like hard freezes. So see you next time.